Welcome to Forked Up, your go-to podcast for all things Titanfall, matzo balls, and pow wow. I'm Matt Holloway. And I'm Michelle Davis. Today we're talking how hemp is helping kids, the clove wars, and profiting off a pandemic. So stay tuned, y'all. It's about to get Forked Up. What the fuck is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Forked Up. Um... We're going to start premiering these episodes on YouTube Friday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific, which is 9 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Central, and 11 a.m. Eastern. If you struggle with time zones, Matt, yeah. Maddie broke it down for you. So when I upload these normally, it's uh, Thursday night to like midnight when the uh, actual podcast gets uploaded to like everyone's feed. And I always notice in like uh, YouTube when I, I upload these that there's like five or six of y'all like watching it as it's being uploaded in real time. And um, YouTube has this cool function where we can like premiere it and like chat with you guys in real time. But there's, you know, there's only a few people watching because it's the middle of the fucking night around Which the world. Which is creepy. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> to the five or six people who are anxious to see it. Um, I, I wish I could like buy all pizza or something, but, uh, but yeah, I, you I, premiere I, it and like a pizza just shows up at their door at the same time while they're watching it. Wouldn't that be tight? Oh my god! Um, but yeah, I asked in the comments last weekend because I saw people were like watching it in real time, and I was like, "What? What time do y'all? When do y'all want to watch this? Like, I, we'll, we'll we'll watch it with you. We'll engage. We'll talk about the content. And how much feedback did you get, Matt? Um, I got <laughs> I got one person, Maria. <laughs> Shout out to Maria. Maria, you um, might be the head of the audience now. Yeah. So uh, she was the only one who chimed in for a time. And guess what? Maria made the schedule. <laughs> so uh, Friday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific and uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> These will be live on YouTube and you can chat with us in real time. We will be sitting, sitting there watching it with you. Um, in our PJs. But yeah, so check this out uh, every Friday. Uh, it will still be in the, the audio version will still be in your feed at uh, midnight on Thursday nights. But the video will be up Friday at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific. So uh, what else? What other housekeeping bullshit we got to get through, Michelle? What do we got? Y'all, pre-orders are going strong and we want you to get your Vice House free ebook when you pre-order our new book, Brave New Meal, uh, which drops November 9th. But we are getting a little bit tired of you guys seeing that there's a free ebook <laughs> and us telling you where to go to get it. And then you being like, I pre ordered months ago. Where do I get the ebook? Um, the same place everyone does. <laughs> it is driving us bananas. Guys, you know that we love you, but some of y'all are having a problem reading very simple instructions. <laughs> BraveNewMeal.com. You can find all the pre-order information there. Scroll you to can the bottom. Find, you can find the Vice House ebook there if you have pre-ordered. You, you just you put get, in your information in the form that's on the bottom of the page. And get, it will pop up. You get a free wallpaper yes. on there. Um, we're going to be uploading some more goodies. Everything you need for the new book, BraveNewMeal.com. I, I don't know how many times I can link that to people in the comments. <laughs> Before, I like I'm that people gonna, aren't even I'm gonna, looking. <laughs> I'm going to snap. Um, people people are going below a comment that they're like, where do I get the ebook? And we're like, oh, check out Brave New Meal. It just download your, you know, your uh, pre-order information. You just go there and you get the ebook. The next comment, same where thing. do I get the ebook? Yeah, same thing. It's fine. Anyways. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but. Y'all keep this up another week. I'm pulling the ebook and no one gets it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, but some of y'all immediately jumped into the Vice House recipes, which was awesome to see. Uh, well, we saw an Erin. Erin from Facebook. Yeah. You know her. You love yeah. her. Uh, she made the cowboy cookies. Yeah. Uh, you saw some people. Yeah. Come on. She did a great job. She got right on that. Uh, some people made the Bluebell cocktail, right? You saw? Yeah. Uh, a couple people were. It was like a Facebook thread. Some people were bouncing uh, Vice House uh, details back and forth. And some people are like, dude, make that Bluebell cocktail. And uh, we got pretty a, fucked up. Off it's, a, it's a good cocktail. <laughs> um, but there were no photos of that, which I totally get because you make the cocktail and, it, and you just start sipping. And then, also, they're hard to style yeah, sometimes. And then you, you forget. 
you know, it yeah. happens. So, um, But if you pre-ordered, again, just go to our page, bravenewmeal.com. It'll be there. It's also um, the books link on the top of our website, badmanners.com. We'll take you to the book four page. Same deal. Also, European audience. Uh, I spent a lot of time trolling the internets because we can't get good answers on all of our distribution all the time because, uh, you know, people in publishing, that's how it goes. Yeah. Uh, so I figured out all these different places that are books for sale right now, and I put them up on the Brave New Meal uh, page. So we now have links for retailers in Australia. We have links for retailers in the UK. Um, and Germany as well now. Yeah, I know that On we, top of our U.S. and Canadian. Some people from Sweden and some people from France were asking, which to our French, French uh, podience and people that we have Bonjour. been- Bonjour. That we we're have so sorry. been <laughs> relentlessly roasting. <laughs> Glad that you're still with us, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, p- people in Europe are, are trying to figure out where to get this. Again, uh, bravenewmeal.com has all the American information, all the international information. If you are international, a lot of Canadian people are asking, do I get the ebook? Yes. Yes, of course. It's for everybody. You just have to enter where you pre-ordered your book from. Yeah. So it, it can be, you can pre-order it in the UK. You can pre-order it, um, you know, in on the German retailer that I links. Also, if you are part of our European audience or any part of our international audience and you know a retailer that is selling our book um, online, fucking DM us. Send it up. I'll put it up on the website uh, because we want people to be able to get it if they want it. Australia was getting a little like... They were getting a little spicy and we know the Aussies love to swear. We're going to leave Australia hanging. No, Yeah, I think that was... Never. It's like we signed the American contract, the Canadian contract, and then the Australian contract, <laughs> like in that order. Yeah, so. UK came, came after Australia. Um, Actually, I think I put you, the UK after Australia on our website too, because uh, we'll, y'all we'll are dope. Up. And um, uh, we had the most fun when we went to Australia for uh, book, was it book two? or is it, it, was, it was, we were about to release book two and we were, sh- no. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah. So it's a blur. Uh, um, it was the most fun. Um, the Aussies are definitely our potty mouth kindred spirits. And <clears> so, uh, you know, all your links are up there. But send us more if you find them. We will keep y'all posted. Um, there are more international fans who are asking where to get the book. And we, we're we trying to find it out in real time. So as we do that, we will update bravenewmeal.com. Um, yeah, I don't know. Don't ask me where to get the fucking ebook. Guys. Because oh I'm, I'm, I'm going to delete it. <laughs> Go <laughs> grab it now. Don't think he won't. He comes from a long line of men who will turn this car around. Yeah. It's <laughs> I, I run on high octane spite, so <laughs> just don't, like... don't try me. Okay? Matt, what is on our menu this week? <laughs> on the menu this week, we have the tomato and white bean soup with rosemary oil. <sighs> Look at that. Guys, Lovely photo. We are making the transition into fall and f- we can't be more excited. I fucking. It's soup season. Y'all. Soup season. Get Expect ready. lots of soups, a lot of more baked goods. We got lots of things in the works. Speaking of baked goods, what else is on the menu this weekend, Michelle? Uh, our Alfredo garlic knots. Ooh. Lovely. Delicious. Surprising. Uh, gorgeous. Way easier to make than they look. And uh, they fucking, what a banger addition to a soup. It is uh, an achievement as an adult when you have made your own garlic knots. You're like, I could do anything. <laughs> I made garlic knots. I didn't. I didn't pay a Papa John. No. I didn't pay a little Caesar. No. No. I, I did made it. them at home. I did it myself. Um, I can basically change my own oil. I could go to space. Uh, <laughs> it's not a big deal. I can make anyone come. I'm all over it. Uh, so <laughs> make your garlic knots and level up, and they're really fucking delicious. And like dipped into that rosemary tomatoey broth. And if y'all. Uh, if you want, if you just want to know what that that garlic dipping sauce is that Papa John's gives you, it's a, literally just like a little bit of uh, garlic and melted butter. That's all it is. So, <laughs> not even real butter, so yeah. you can do that at home. <laughs> yeah, it's it's shelf stable. It's not real butter, so, which is even grosser. So, uh, but yeah, so check out those recipes. And again, if you pre-order the book, you can cook anything out of the Vice House ebook. Um, highly recommend that stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm upset and terrified that nobody has made the hush puppies yet. Yet. No one has made the hush puppies 
yet. Uh, you guys, this is a recipe that I've been working on and dreaming about and talking about for how many years, Matt? The how many um, hush puppies? Yeah. Is it uh, like so four the, years? At least since book two or three. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so fucking make them. Yeah. They are my child. <laughs> I love those things. Um, but yeah, Matt, what else has been going on with you? I see that you voted today. For anyone who is not aware of what's going on here in California, we are having a recall, which is one of the dumbest fucking elections that I've ever been a part of. Yeah, you um, weren't here for the first recall. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> conservatives don't like Governor Newsom and they're not letting him serve his full term. They don't like how he's been governing, uh, you know, so they are recalling him and we are having to go to the polls to say, let him serve his term, which is so fucking stupid because it is costing the state almost half a billion dollars, which is like during a we pandemic, could be, we, we could, we use could that. be doing that anything else with that money housing is, the unhome th this is such a colossal waste of everyone's Feeding time energy people. and money so um but yeah we both voted today today's tuesday this is the last day to vote um yeah cool sticker michelle Thanks, yeah. man. Ex exercising your your democratic right yeah Love democracy um i'm, I'm mad that y'all made me get out of the house for this this is so stupid uh, I, I got shit to do well and i don't need to be going to the polls to vote for him twice <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, don't make it sound like we love him. This is crazy. I've had to vote yes for this guy. Over man, I'm, not, I'm not a Newsom defender. He's done. He's de like he's done some good shit. He's also done some really stupid. I, yeah, shit. Yeah, I, I enjoyed his time as mayor of San Francisco. Um, but Go going to French Laundry when everything was closed was one of the dumbest goddamn things he could have. It was done. a bad look. That's honestly that's probably why we're having this recall. <laughs> I, so I, ho I hope that meal was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin. Uh, uh, speaking of meals that may or may not be worth it, the McPlant is back. I, you guys might remember um, early last year, they launched the McPlant. This is the vegan burger at McDonald's. They launched it in Canada, did a little test run for three months quietly, and then pulled it and didn't say what they were going to do with it. And now they are launching it in Europe. Um, and this time, unlike when a lot of chains launch vegan burger patties, um, everything on the bun will be vegan. And they have put specific, like, uh, a different griddle so it's not cooked with the meat. Uh, so they're going to have a vegan cheese there. And this is all part of their partnership with uh, Beyond Meat. So if you are in the UK, uh, you can get a McPlant starting, I believe, yeah, the UK and Ireland this month. I remember talking about this uh, McDonald's. I don't know why y'all didn't call us. McPlant is it's not a, it's a good name. It's a stupid name. Yeah, I guess they don't want it to perform well. <laughs> um, um, so it'll have a vegan cheese, like I was saying, ketchup, mustard, a vegan sauce, freshly sliced onions, pickles, lettuce, and a tomato. Um, so it's a, is it a Big Mac, essentially? Does it have the special no, sauce? No, no, because it's, it's one patty. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it doesn't have the bread in the middle. Yeah, or the second patty. Mm -hmm. But um, it's interesting. If you've had it, let us know how it goes. We would love a firsthand response from somebody that isn't paid to like it. So let us know. Yeah, not to like plug McDonald's, but um, I'm glad that we're seeing more options, I guess. Anything that can start to reduce our consumption of animal protein, I'm for. And sure. I've always been for replacing trash meat. Mm -hmm. With fake meats, I think that's great because um, it's not like they're serving the highest quality fucking beef at a if McDonald's anyway. If you're just like eating ground chuck, like you might as well be eating like a vegan burger. Yeah. It's, it's, they're both heavily processed. Like yeah. you're, you're not going to be able to tell the fucking difference. Yeah. And it'd be better if something didn't die for your shitty ass burger. Uh, so McPlant, if you get to try it, if you're in the UK or Ireland, um, let us know. We would actually love to know how it tastes. In, you know, again, from somebody who isn't paid to tell me that it's fucking amazing. Um, I don't like the food reviews. And we know people that do this. That they they will go and give a review of a restaurant or a new vegan product and they rave about it. And then we'll go try it. And we're like, this, this, this fucking sucks. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but they it's like, yeah, they get they get paid to like talk about it. Well, yeah. not, not even like. It's like this unspoken thing that um, they have to speak kindly. You, like you essentially won't get paid until after the review. 
So yeah, so. if you trash it, it won't be good. Um, but then you're encouraging people to waste their fucking money to try a product that you know is shitty. And it really bothers me, especially at like back in the day when we used to go out to eat, like sitting down at a restaurant, spending a hundred dollars, <laughs> being like, oh, you knew this was garbage. <laughs> you told me to come here. Cool. Fuck you. <laughs> you know what I don't fucking care for is when I go to a restaurant and they have vegan options on the menu. And they're somehow the same price or more expensive than the non-vegan options. Oh, when you get it like veganized and you're like, hold on, I took away the meat and didn't why, even add anything, but it's four why, more Why am I, you're charging me $3 for avocado. <laughs> what the fuck's going on here? Um, don't care for that. <laughs> well, that is a excellent segue for us to start getting into this week's food history. Y'all ready for some food history? It is now time for this week in food history. Mmm. This some serious gourmet shit. Well, this week we are back on our spice search after our sojourn to say goodbye to the OG food stylist. Uh, and we've landed on one of the spices with the bloodiest history. That's right. We're talking cloves. I don't know. Um, I don't use clothes that much. Yeah. Well, most. Uh... I had a roommate who uh, <laughs> sm- <laughs> he would smoke those clove cigarettes. Yes. Is that the, is that the same spice? Yes, huh. it is the same spice. I um, always thought it smelled like kind of pleasant, like a little herbal. But um, yeah. Well, there yeah. you go. Smoking spice. Yeah. So he had other questionable activities. So. <laughs> Uh, lots and lots of people have died for cloves and not just Matt murdering his roommates for his other questionable behavior. Uh, cloves are this super strong spice found in savory dishes, desserts, drinks. They are in everything. Um, ground or whole cloves flavor meat, like think um, holiday hams, you know, that you see them stuck in the skin of the holiday ham, kind of crisscrossed. I'm going to pull up a photo of a clove. So I know... Oh, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> look at those little fuckers. Yeah, so... Um, they almost look like mushrooms. Kind they, of. They kind of look like psilocybin. Not that I would know what psilocybin mushrooms look like. <laughs> well, they're in sauces. They're in rice dishes all over India, Iran, um, all kinds of places. And cloves are often used along with cinnamon and nutmeg in sweet dishes. Um, they're one of the major ingredients in your favorite pumpkin spice. Um, and... You're, you, they're used in drinks like mulled wine, mulled ciders, or chai. They're in everything. Cloves are a spice made from a flower bud of an evergreen tree. Yes, that's right. We've got another delicious flower on our hands. So like Matt was saying, the, the flower buds are harvested in their immature state and then dried, and they're shaped like these small kind of like reddish brown spikes. They kind of look like um, little teeny microphones, with like a little flower petal around like what the bulb of the microphone would look like. Cloves can be used ground. Like I said, they can be used whole, um, but they have this super strong kind of warming flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, And they just, they smell like pumpkin spice. They're delicious. But until the 16th century, they only grow on five islands in the uh, Indonesian archipelago, despite being traded all over the world. So... They came to be known as the Spice Islands by the European colonizers because they were so rich in these spices, cloves being the number one export. Um, they, they've been found, cloves were found in Sri Lanka um, dating back to 2000 BC. They, in the third century BC, Chinese emperors in the Han Dynasty required those who addressed them in court to be chewing cloves so their breath was like fresh. Look, I'm in here with that halitosis <laughs> trying but, to ask me, the motherfucking emperor, for a goddamn thing. But think about this is the Chinese emperors in the Han Dynasty requiring mm. the spice that only grows on these five islands in the Indonesian archipelago. That's, that's, that's crazy. A, that's a flex being like, I'm going to go see the emperor and like he's going to make me kind of brush my teeth. Cloves were described by Pliny the Elder. The um, Egyptian used them for medicinal purposes. Um Again, crazy that they grew in just these tiny islands far away from everything, but they're traded all over the world. And they were one of the most expensive spices in the world for the longest time. 
um, they were treated like how we treat oil today. Exports were limited and they were a constant source of wars since they had such a limited growing region and such a high demand. The Portuguese, the Dutch, and the British all waged bloody wars to get control of these islands. And when the East India Company gained control, and thus Britain, um, they exported tens of thousands of clove saplings. Mm. Like it was it almost, um, some of the historical things I'm reading, they're like, it was almost industrial in scale. Mm. How many of these clove saplings they stole from these islands and the native peoples who lived there, these islands were not uninhabited. And they just planted them all throughout their empire so that they could have a greater monopoly on the clove market. Do you think that there was like, there had to be at least one sailor who was like looking at this plant that they've traveled all this way. They've had a war over. And he's like, have we tried growing them? <laughs> yeah. This seems like a lot. Well, like, I mean, they can't grow it in England. They can't grow it in Europe. Like mm. you can only grow in these specific regions. And so people- Is that still uh, to this day? Yeah. Oh, okay. See, yeah. I, I mean, they, they found other places that they can grow it, but you know, it's all not in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm. So the East India Company invaded the islands in 1810. Hundreds were killed. They exported all of these saplings and then uh, they gave it back to the Dutch- and the Dutch were like, cool, but now these islands are They're basically worthless, worthless yeah. to us. But the Dutch um, retained control of the islands until they got independence in 1949. Mm, that wasn't that long ago. That's mm. the year my parents were born. That's crazy. <laughs> but Ferdinand Magellan, the first explorer to have his fleet circumnavigate the globe, went on his expedition in order to get his hands on the spices, specifically cloves. And despite the outrageous expenses of his expedition, the four destroyed ships, the death of 252 sailors, including Magellan himself. <laughs> people always say he was the first man to circumnavigate the globe. He didn't. He, he died. He died. That fool died. He <laughs> died. Okay. He, I will say that his expedition was the first one to circumnavigate the globe. But by the end, it was like 12 sailors <laughs> like on a prayer. <laughs> you know, men will circumnavigate the globe and die to get 380 bags of cloves before going to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, like, I, like Matt's saying, they brought back 381 bags of cloves and that was enough to repay the costs of this years long voyage because it took them years and they still had a substantial profit. Hmm. So basically the first trip around the world was paid with cloves. Flowers. With flower yeah. buds, with dried, spicy, delicious flower buds. Hmm. Hmm. And we still use them. And thousands of people have died for them. So show some fucking respect, okay? So when, so when you go down and you get your pumpkin spice latte, you put some respect on Magellan's crew's name. <laughs> Yeah, but also, you know, think about the native inhabitants of these islands and oh, just for sure. yeah, they fucking slaughtered all these, these poor, pe poor people like that. They were like, they probably see these ships coming on the horizon. They're like, what do you think that's about? <laughs> I hope it's not can't about be, these cool smelling about, yeah. trees. <laughs> It's like smoking a clove cigarette. It's like, I don't know. Well, probably nothing. <laughs> yeah. So Let's see what they want. So whether you're using them ground or whole in your fall recipes, whether you're putting their essential oils on your toothaches or you're just using them to make your house smell warm and delicious, just remember their crazy complicated history and, you know, show some respect, like we're saying. Or maybe you have to go see the emperor, you know? I just, it's such a flex. Yeah. <laughs> so cloves. That's this week in food history. Well, speaking of dried herbs, let's do some ideas. You got any narcotics or marijuana in here? <coughs> uh, not anymore. No? <sighs> I'm on week four, five, no THC. I'm having weird dreams, man. Which I, I know I've talked about before, that if you have daily use of THC and then you get off of it cold turkey, you just have like vivid nightmares. They're not they're not even dreams. They're just nightmares. Full blown fucking <laughs> horrific, <laughs> vivid wake up in a pool of cold sweat nightmares. But you've always had the worst nightmares of anyone I know. It's true. I do have. I should be like a, I don't know, like a horror writer or something. Just wake up and just write down whatever terrible shit. Anyways. I got some ideas this week. Where do bugs go when it rains? 
we used to not have mosquitoes here in Southern California and it was raining the other morning. And I was like, where are they going? Where are y'all hiding? Mm. Cause it, that has to be like mortar fire to them. Like yeah. raindrops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, it would it'd be like a whole hot tub or like small, like above ground pool dropping on our heads out of nowhere. Yeah. Where do they go? I think they die. I feel like. I mean, you see them washed up on the sidewalks, right? I feel like some bugs, they're probably like dragonflies could probably weather the storm mm -hmm. depending on how hard the rain is. But like, yeah, if you're a little mosquito and then it starts to sprinkle, like. But mosquitoes like the rain. They lay their eggs in water. Yeah, but not getting pelted by it. Yeah. I mean, I just think about hail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Where do they go? Fuck, they die. Oh <laughs> they die. My member, my friend Alex, sent us a video of this crazy hailstorm. She lives in Asheville and she's from LA. So she was just shout like, Shout out, Alex. Yeah, shout she out listens. to Alex. What's up? She's holding the strawberry shortcake in the first book. Um, so she sends me this video. She's like, What the fuck is happening? <laughs> she's That's like, hell, baby. Yeah. Um, and she told me she found so many dead birds. <laughs> from the she's hell. getting. Absolutely waylaid yeah. by the sky. Yeah, they're like, why? I fly in you. Um, that's a good idea, Matt. Apropos of nothing, I think that every mirror is used. You can't buy a new mirror. Every mirror is used. Ooh. The moment they're made, they're used. That's true. Do you know what I like about... I Again, no drugs for <laughs> over a month now, so... Antique mirrors. I like to think about all the different kinds of clothes that they've seen and mm, the different kind of looks like that, that have been in front of them. Yeah. Like, especially super, like, when you go to, um, like, Versailles or something mm -hmm. and you see those old mirrors and you just think about, like, the, the emperor, like, all these people have been in front of them. The things these mirrors have seen. Haunted mirrors. I love it. Oh, yeah. there's ghosts in them. I got one more nonsense thought since I guess they're technically not ideas. Some percentage of wind has to be farts. Ooh. Some percent. Do, right? you, do you think that about bubbles in the ocean too? Yeah, that's fish farts. <laughs> yeah. Next next time you feel <laughs> that cool breeze hit your face, at least 2% of that's someone's fart. Do you think someone farts cold? I don't know. Maybe. I saw somewhere online this, somebody put some thermal imaging cameras um, in like a city square and stuff and just recorded people farting. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> and so you could see can these little poof of like hot air coming out of people's like Can, can y'all buy my fourth book so that I can <laughs> finance these like weird <laughs> hobbies of mine that I want to I think get, I want to get uh, fucking infrared cameras and. Yeah, little little fart clouds. I think farts are endlessly funny. Farts I, are hilarious. I I never get tired of them. They're always hilarious. My my girlfriend does not care for bathroom humor, and I, that's the biggest red flag. <laughs> 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 Love her to death, but like, yeah, fart fart jokes, anything. Like, you can't even like, I don't know. It, when the <laughs> fart sound when when the fart sounds really stupid, yeah. it makes me laugh even harder. When it sounds like a duck quacking, hilarious. Yeah. Well, since Michelle is hijacking all of my ideas this week, I have a new segment for the show, and we have no title card, we have no music for it, but we're calling it Talkbuster Video, and <laughs> this is sure. There you go. <laughs> that could be the whoosh. That's the sound. Why not? Sure. Fine. This segment we are going to be discussing. Uh, our favorite and fresh videos from around the internet, v tangentially food related. They don't have to be, but um, Michelle was not prepared for the segment. I have a plethora. It's not that Michelle of... wasn't prepared. Michelle... No, she didn't know. She didn't know I was doing this. Michelle so. was kept in the dark on purpose to have a genuine reaction to the video she's going to see for the very first time. Um, and if you're listening to the audio of this and you're not watching on YouTube, then, wow, then... We'll, we'll do our best to describe it to you. I don't know. So. Okay, this is a Senate hearing. This is on C-SPAN. First one, here we go. They got on uh, two chartered jets, maskless, with at least one case of light beer, <laughs> and hopped on the jets to come to Washington, D.C. Okay, so that is <laughs> Senator... John Cornyn. From Texas. Yeah, talking about a group of women who have a case of light beer it's on he printed it it's, out and circled it it is a uh it's a it's a group of democrats when they were doing the new uh fucking aggressive 
uh, legislation against uh, voting rights. Oh, okay. Yeah, they left the state. That they, the Democrats were like, we're going to get drunk in Washington. And uh, Okay, first of all... John Cornyn is upset about it, apparently. Um, so. That is 100% a bus and yeah. not a charter jet. Just yeah. FYI. That but, is uh, not a jet. That is a fucking bus. I love that they got on that bus and they were like... Did we get a did we get a 30 rack? Yeah. We should get we should get a 30 rack. <laughs> and it's and, like a tote bag and, and they give it a seat. <laughs> those those two seats are empty, which leads me to believe they put at least two I'm, more 30 yeah. racks. <laughs> these these lady Democrats in Texas, I I would party with them. Yeah. They they seem tight. Yeah. yeah. But that's uh, that's for sure a bus. John Cornyn, stay pressed, my man. <laughs> stay pressed. <laughs> Light beer. Yeah. <laughs> Not even a full Budweiser slight. Okay, got another one from Michelle. Here we go. <laughs> so someone <laughs> was cooking a, a very greasy burger in a too small pan. I looked at that and I was like, that is the greasiest pancake that I've ever seen before. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those... Uh, Hamburger patties you get from the store that's already made for sure. Yeah, and uh, they there's they're no, not holding onto the pan. There's no to, there's no handle to the pan. Is there no handle? Let's watch it again. See how they're moving. Okay, it but around. look at the si the side. You can't tell. It could be inside. I don't know that there's, there's no, no handle. Who has a pan with no <laughs> handle? So he's trying to flip this burger. He can't get under it because he's using a plastic fucking spatula and a teeny ass pan. And uh, the flame from the gas burner gets in the pan and starts a fucking grease fire. And this guy, apparent, first of all, 100% a, a, a man. Ch this is a child. 100% a based, man. Based on that scream, that's a child. 100% a man. 100% does not know that you shouldn't put water on a grease fire. <laughs> This is that's a lot of grease and in that was, pan. The question is, was he filming this because he thought it was going to be dope? <laughs> like, that's it's always the, my it's, question. It's the pterodactyl scream at the end that gets me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's no no bueno. Um, real quick before we move on to the next video, uh, can we just like, can we ban these like plastic spatulas? I don't know why people sell them. I don't know why people buy them. Um, <laughs> I don't they're, get they're, it coming or going. Every, if I'm in your kitchen and I ask for a spatula and you hand this to me, I'm just going to flip it with my hand yeah. because this is, they're going to melt. Yeah. Like this one's already like half melted. Well, and they're too thick. They're at a bad angle. Nothing about them is functional. There's, they, me, there's metal spatulas. You don't need a plastic spatula. If you have one in your kitchen right now, throw it away. It, well, you know, it's just, there's better, throw it away. there's better uses. Anyway. And here is video number three. Well, police in San Diego responding to a break in at a Wells Fargo bank and surveillance showed a man in the break room using the microwave. You did that for a hot pocket? Yes. Oh, that's for a hot pocket. You broke into a bank for a hot pocket. Hot pocket. For hot, hot pocket. pocket. Was it worth it? Hell yes, yeah, worth it. Yes, yeah, worth it. A hot pocket? Hell yeah. <laughs> I like. That the journalist or whoever asked this gentleman who's being arrested for breaking into a bank to warm yeah. up a hot pocket. Journalist asked him, was it worth it? And he looks at that man like that is the dumbest shit I have ever heard yeah. in my life. Of course it was worth it. Uh, I want to know how he knew there was a microwave at this bank. Every bank's got a microwave. Everybody's got a break room, you know. Maybe he used to work there. Yeah. I don't know. Real quick, I want to play part of this clip again because he sings the hot pocket jingle. And after close examination, I think that the officer who's arresting him joins in. Ooh. Let's give it a listen. You broke into a bank for a hot pocket. Hot pocket. Hot, hot pocket. pocket. <laughs> there is a second voice. There is a second voice. Singing that jingle in unison. There was a second shooter. <laughs> I thought you'd like that. That was from uh, San Diego. I know. I wish they sh could show more details of like where it was in San Diego so I could get the vibe for the, the surrounding area. <laughs> but good for him. I just like that. He that dude's energy is I, I want to be there like he is. He's being arrested. He's going to spend the night, at least the night in jail. Mm hmm. Um, you break it into a bank, I imagine is like, they're probably going to throw it, the fucking book at you. I, yeah, I don't know. But like, it doesn't seem like he cared that it was a bank. So can they care? 
<laughs> did he get the hot pocket? Did they give him the hot pocket? Did yeah. he, was he allowed to eat it? What kind no. of hot pocket? We have so I imagine questions. pepperoni. Pepperoni. Yeah. You know, classic. Come on. Classic choice. Yeah, everyone's favorite. Did he um, get the tap? It's hard using a microwave for the first time, like a. You know what I mean? Like, did he oh, get he the might have, yeah. numbers right? It, it, anytime that you're using a new, microwave. a new microwave, if you're at like a friend's house or something, you're like, and you're <laughs> punching in the buttons and you're like, I, how does your microwave work? It says popcorn. <laughs> Which that button never fucking works, by the way. You hit the popcorn button on a microwave, it is going to burn the shit out of your popcorn. That is guaranteed. I love when you're like, okay, are we talking 30 minute, 30 second reheat? Are we talking a minute, minute and a half? Or are we talking two and a half? How old is your microwave? <laughs> Let's talk about useless buttons on a microwave. Popcorn's not doing shit. Yeah. Pizza's not doing shit. Um, there's always like a like a like a turkey or a meat. Yeah. You know? Who's who's cooking a whole ass turkey? Please don't. In a microwave. Or fish. Monsters. Next video, please. Okay, so this one I should have done after the uh the burger video. Uh this is a photo. And I think I found this on Twitter. So let's let's digest what we're looking at here. <sighs> okay. What is that? So we're looking at clearly a grocery store. Yeah. They have ground uh, burger patties lined up, available for purchase. And one of the rows says maple blueberry beef patties, five ounces, two for five dollars. Describe what those look like to you, Michelle. They look like moldy as fuck mm -hmm. hamburger patties. They That's what I thought. That's why I saved it. I was like, they're selling moldy ass burger patties two for five dollars. Not only I, I'm concerned about the flavor profile. Yeah. I'm concerned about how they look. I'm also frankly concerned about what's next to them, which seems to be chaotically large White button mushrooms just thrown in next to whole pineapples in I the hope, meat case. I hope they're not selling uh, the the pineapples and mushrooms next to. What are mushrooms doing there? What are What do you mean? What, what, what are is, mushrooms? Like, what are pineapples doing there? Did they run out of uh, blueberry patties? So they they were like just <laughs> fill it with fill it with button mushrooms and I don't, pineapples. I wish I could tell which grocery store this was. And they're very specific about the. Uh, the temperature, how you should cook it. Yeah. It, that, that's why I was like, these are moldy patties that they're trying to hot. Yeah, it says cook for 10 to 12 minutes. That's a burnt ass patty. Until the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But there's no signage on the other patties. It also says as advertised. What does that mean? What flyer <laughs> as did they send, have they sent out to the neighborhood? Come on down and get your maple blueberry beef patties, two for five dollars. Make sure you cook the fuck out of Honestly, them. Honestly, if I was walking past it, I would have stopped cold in my tracks and taken a picture and sent it to you. That's why it's here. This is why we're talking this about is it. Disgusting. Um, there's a lot going on here. I'm not saying that putting blueberries or any fruit inside of a okay, beef but, patty but is really, illegal, but it feels like it should be. We're really just blazing past maple too. Yeah. Maple blueberry patties? The the so. the raw ground meat next to uh produce is disturbing. There's a lot of uh confusing things going on here. Somebody really phoned it on that shift. Yeah. So um saw that and I wanted to talk about it. I don't like it. So there we go. Thanks. I'm not gonna sleep. Got another one from Michelle. Here we go. Are you aware it's Saturday? Or right? It's Saturday. Oh, it's a banana pudding tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been that excited about anything in a quite a long time in my lifetime. Okay, so this is an older man in what seems to be a parking lot. Let's talk about the fit first. Let's rewind it. Yeah, so quite a fit. He slacks, yeah. uh, tucked in crisp white shirt. My man's looking pretty good. Got a Stetson of some kind on his head, mm -hmm. smoking a cig. I think he's in a car a lot based on the balloons behind him. Oh, yeah, he is blasting cigs. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he pulls that out right in the first few seconds. Yeah. Huh. Um, and clearly it's the South because he's stoked on banana pudding, which honestly... Who amongst us? I am not even sure that he's talking about food. I think that this is code for something. I think that he lives in a retirement community and banana pudding is his girlfriend. 
or somebody. First of all, know. if that man lives in a retirement community, look at that mustache. He's all the old men die early. That man is not hurting for banana pudding. Okay. Yeah, that man's getting his banana pudding <laughs> no question. tonight. No question. So, yeah. he was, I haven't been that excited about anything maybe ever in my life. Yeah. All right. Shout out to him. All right. Like, I, again, I, I love this dude's energy. I want to, I just want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Michelle, this is, uh, this is actually footage of me. Uh, getting fired up for our first round of interviews that we had to do for uh, book four. So let's see how I uh, let's see how I prep for interviews. <gasps> Why isn't he concerned about the fire that started? Did he start the fire? It's a flare. Bart Simpson. Is he ready to die? What? Is he trying to die? Are we watching a man kill himself on camera? So this is how I get ready for press. Um, I got to get fired up to talk about my past work. And this is just my routine. That, that looks like Michael Voltaggio. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of the pod. Um, yeah, Mike, is this you? I'm gonna, I think so. I'm going to text that to him. <laughs> so this is how you get ready for a shift every night. Yeah. <laughs> Getting on guys' grocery games. Got to get ready. <laughs> um, for the listeners, Michelle, describe what it is that we're looking at. Um, there's a skinny tattooed man. Uh, in the driver. What was that word? Tattooed man. What's a tattooed man? Tattooed man. Oh, uh, tattooed man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's sitting in the driver's seat. There is an inflatable Bart Simpson next to him. And this is like some camera on the dash. And he put on some music. He's getting hyped. Then he lights a fire off camera. Mm-hmm. And it looks like, I believe it is a Molotov cocktail. I, I think it's a flare of mm-hmm. some kind. Some... No, flares don't do that. That okay. is That is a high, that is a... But then when he holds a it, it's li- a stick. That is a liquid-fueled flame right there. But it's right a there. stick when he holds it. Um, this is in a car with, like, almost no back. That, See, look at that. That's a Molotov cocktail. Uh, okay. See, okay. It's, it's in a bottle. He's okay. got a rag. That's alcohol. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And then he starts eating some or chugging something, a beer probably, shotgunning it. Uh, it looks like he's in the cab of a truck. Mm, this looks like some powder. This Let's looks like... Oh, you're right. It is powder. But then, then it looks no, a little it's... foamy, though, there for a second. Yeah, I think, uh, you know why I think that is? I think that's definitely not drugs. <laughs> okay, and then he, like, somehow, well, I mean, oh, and then he blows the powder on the thing. He throws the Molotov cocktail out the window, but then he apparently has fireworks in his back seat, which are now going off, and he's getting super hyped, and the smoke from the fireworks is slowly making him disappear from view. And that is how I get fired up for press. Um, I Do like you, I like this guy's energy. Um, I might hang out with him. I don't know. Okay, all he, I can, he obviously likes taking a big old scoop of pre workout. <laughs> Those aren't drugs, right? Um, all I can imagine is doing a cart run at the grocery store, and, and you see, <laughs> <laughs> you see this dude, and like the car that he's in looks like a. It, it looks like the cat. Of a, it's a cab of a truck yeah. that has like one of those snug tops yeah. that he probably, that's probably like where he sleeps. <laughs> this, this gentleman right here. Um, I don't care for him. Yeah, no, I like his energy. He's good. A no. lot, lot of, lot of good energy on the pod and, and this week's talk buster video. And uh, we will be bringing more of those to y'all. If y'all have any silly ass videos, they don't have to be necessarily food related. We prefer them to be, but if it's silly enough, we'll, we'll air it. You can DM it to us on any platform. You can also email us at fu at badmanners.com. So now that I have um, traumatized Michelle and uh, probably frightened the audience a little bit, let's just get back into our normal episode. I'm going to be looking for blueberry burgers at every grocery store I go to only so I can scream. I, I'm going to try to cook them. <laughs> I'm curious now. Well, um, I got a story all about beef. Oh, yeah. Let me hear your story. All right. So the Biden administration has taken note of the rapidly rising prices of food all over the country and is starting to investigate some of the biggest names in food for uh, using the pandemic to pad their bottom line. Let me guess. 
known enemies of the pod. Absolutely. You know that they are. So the White House National Economic Council Director, Brian Dees. Not biting. Not biting. Sorry for you, Brian. Last week in a briefing, uh, he said that the increases in the price of beef, pork, and poultry are responsible for half of the jump in food prices since late 2020, yet farmers have seen little gain in what they're paid by these giant meat companies. So the people actually, like, raising the livestock, they're not getting any more money. It's just these meat companies that own all these smaller facilities that are making all this money. Quote, it raises a concern about pandemic profiteering, about companies that are driving price increases in a way that hurts consumers who are going to the grocery store, Dees said. What happened isn't benefiting the actual producers, the farmers, and the ranchers that are growing the product. Again, sorry, Dees, for every time we laugh. Um, I'm sure this has been going on with you for quite some time. <laughs> and as regular listeners of the pod know, when it comes to meat, this country is in a complete monopoly, which makes the likelihood of corruption and price gouging all the higher. Brian, you could have called us. I feel like we talked about this shit like six <laughs> months ago. Yes. No, we've talked yeah. about it so many times. Uh, four companies control 80% of the U.S. beef capacity, 60% of poultry, and 70% of pork, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In a briefing, D said that these this consolidation that they've let happen, I don't know why he's acting like, it just happened, and yeah, we didn't, didn't have any, any part of it. This didn't happen overnight. Yeah. This um, is by design. Yeah, this has led to the current problems, and now they're focusing on measures which the administration has already announced to try to um, remedy this, including new regulatory proposals intended to protect livestock producers, legislation to boost cattle market transparency, um, but you think they'd be willing to work a little swifter. Um, so these meat companies, we all know the names. It's your Hormel, it's your Cargill, it's your Tyson, it's, you know. Yeah, it is. Uh, by the way, these giant companies, they are 96% of the market. So uh, this is not affecting uh, what few small family farms are still out there. Uh, they're less than 4%. So Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the Justice Department is currently investigating the four big beef meat packing companies to determine whether or not they are violating the antitrust laws. Um, the probe actually started under the Trump administration. Um, and Biden administration is keeping it going with plans to add additional civil rights issues to mm. it after what happened during the pandemic to all the people working on the floors for these meat producers. And the Justice Department is also conducting a separate criminal investigation uh, of price fixing by the chicken producers, which we've mentioned on the pod before. I think you covered that story. Um, that effort has led to criminal charges against companies and executives, including Pilgrim's Pride and its former chief executive officer with more to come. Hmm. Um, they're investigating Tyson, too, which is the largest chicken producer. Um, and Pilgrim's Pride has had a ton of recalls. It's still in business. It's still working, even though all these chicken companies work together to fix prices higher so that the consumers had to pay an inflated price and everyone was making money. Good. Fuck them. Yeah, no, these- Get them, Justice Department. <laughs> these fucks are making a ton of money. Tyson, the largest U.S. meat company by sales, said its beef segment had a record profit margin of 16% during the first nine months of the fiscal year 2021. So why the fuck is everybody paying so goddamn much if you're just posting profit after profit after profit? Uh, it's called greed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's called not, greed. It's not going to the people who- uh, raising these animals, it's not. They didn't even. It's not. It's not improving the. You know, if you are one of those people that you can probably hear me rolling my eyes, care about animal welfare. Um, it's not going towards that. It is just strictly they didn't going even, to these companies, and and they're they're taking the money and they're they're paying less in taxes because they have a strong lobby. Well, and they didn't even provide PPE for their workers. Yeah. So. Remember, they they stayed open, and yeah. a bunch of their workers got COVID, and then and, the, and then the yeah, and they died, and then the managers took fucking bets on who was on die. how much uh, how bad the outbreak would be in the factory, and so. who was going to die, naming specific employees. And there's also an investigation into that. Um, so we need to break up these monopolies ASAP. We need to stop these subsidies, like we talk about all the time. Um, and it's fucking wild. It's, it'll help our wallets, it'll help our wastes, and it'll help the fucking environment. And fuck these guys, they're overcharging you. Yeah. If you don't care about it for any other reason that you just you should be paying less, care there. I don't know. 
Well, you know what we should do is all this land that they are raising all the livestock on, we should just convert to like hemp farms. Yeah. Because it's a true American product. Yeah. Like hemp has been around since, I mean, our constitution was written on hemp. Like, so. Um, How about that? And that ties into the new story that I have this week that by the year 2030, almost all children's toys will be made 100% with recyclable material. Uh, one of which is hemp. Oh, so so it's um, not uh, it's recyclable. It's not recycled materials, or is it both? It's both. Oh, it's, okay. uh, it's uh so as we all know, all children's toys mostly made with plastic. Not just the toy itself, but like the packaging that it comes in. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a lot of plastic. They used to be metal, but you know, kids pop dies out. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure like. <laughs> Toys back in the day, like I remember, they were so fucking dad, dangerous. <laughs> yeah, my dad gave me some of his toys from like when he was a kid, and they were like these like uh, toy cars that were made like out of like sheet metal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the like, playground like, dangerous. equipment used to all be metal, um, and if you lived in an area that hadn't had any money for a while, our slides in the Bay Area, these oh, they huge just slides, they were yeah. metal, and so you'd go down it, and you would get like first degree burns. On your yeah. legs. No one's going down the, the slide in the summertime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but yeah, non-biodegradable plastics are a large contributor to climate collapse, um, as we've talked about in the past, and that's not a surprise to anybody. But uh, the same is true with kids' toys, that these products are made with um, plastics like ABS, which is uh, doesn't break down. Mm -hmm. What they do is they break into these microplastics and they end up in landfills and then they get into our water, um, right? They get into our water, they get into the soil. Um, if you do consume animal products, the animals eat them and then you eat them. So yeah, I think that it's almost impossible to find um, a human without any plastics in our flesh mm -hmm. yeah. these days. Yeah. Yeah. Not that like we've talked about that. But. <laughs> so Lego who makes 60 billion blocks a year has been experimenting with hemp uh, to make their blocks. And you have companies like uh, Mattel and Hasbro who make Nerf guns and darts. And I mean, Barbie. There's, there's a lot of plastic material. And they're experimenting with uh, PET plastics, um, which are essentially plastics that were made, like your water bottles, things like that. And then those get broken down and filtered through a system and get, they get made new again. So it is possible to use plastic that we already have out there okay. and make kids toys out of them and they're safe and all these companies have also agreed to have the packaging to be only uh paper and cardboard <gasps> that's so awesome that it is all uh post-sumer is it pro post, post post consumer recycled materials i don't know don't judge me whatever <laughs> but so all these companies have agreed to um, move away from single-use plastics by 2030 yeah which i think is is great because the generation like our generation cares about climate collapse yeah and the generation, and the generation after. behind us is going to care a lot more like we're the generation of captain motherfucking planet <laughs> worst superhero ever by the way he didn't fix shit because it only got worse if anything captain planet contributed to the problem <laughs> where you at captain planet <laughs> haven't seen you since the 90s what happened to acid rain we used to talk about that all the time yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Captain Planet was bad at his job. Yeah. I don't think he understood the assignment. But I do think this is an easy thing to replace. Like you're saying, kids aren't going to know the fucking difference. And um, there's nothing creepier than seeing a child's toy at a landfill not decomposing. So <laughs> this is also making the world a little less spooky. It's a fair point. Yeah. You're seeing a, seeing a, a kid's a doll toy. Head just, uh, just in a dump. Yeah. Um, I think that we go a step further and we we just make less toys for kids. I mean, I say this is somebody who doesn't have any kids, but uh what let's let's go back to uh like a a hoop and a stick. My mom. And they, they push that down the road, huh? My mom used to give me she had this bag full of buttons, mm -hmm. like mismatched buttons. There you go. And she would make me go through and she's and, like, Don't swallow them. Yeah, and like <laughs> and I would have to match them up and I'd match oh, them she's all giving up. You, she's giving you busy work. Yeah, but then she just put them back in. Just toss them all in. Yeah, and I was like, "Why did I?" <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. Do it again, that's kind of brilliant. She no. made you, she made you do a chore, yeah, and then just yeah, like it was like a puzzle that she just broke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was. Uh, y'all don't need toys. 
<laughs> Give your kid a, a bag full of buttons and some <laughs> empty birth control containers and she'll have a and grand a, old time. <laughs> and, a, and a stick and a hoop. <laughs> I remember me and uh, my best friend growing up, we had a, a roll of duct tape that we would <laughs> hurl down the street. We had to this see. one roll of duct tape. It was, yeah. And we would hurl it down the street to see how fast we could uh, like get it going and then how far we could, and we would mark on the street with more duct tape and be like, no, I had, I had it. Remember last week I was over here uh, and you're like, no, that duct tape's old, dude. That's you move that. <laughs> Kids don't eat toys. That's what we're getting at. <laughs> Anyways, they're reducing plastics, which is great. So, and they're using hemp. So, which is also great. All, all this farmland that these motherfuckers are profiting off of. Let's just take that land from them. what was your favorite toys at Kim show? Um, I mean, the bag of buttons. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> See? It worked. I also played with the uh, metal steamer basket a lot. <laughs> kids don't need toys. That's that's what we learned this week. We learned that kids don't need toys. We've also learned that some flowers are worth fighting for. We also learned that the U.S. is beating its meat. Monopoly. Oh, uh, <laughs> and we also learned that Vice House is out for anyone who pre-ordered our new book and you need to not fucking ask us where to get it. It's at bravenewmeal.com. If I see another comment, <laughs> you're going to see it. Asking me where to get the ebook. You're going to see it. <laughs> I'm taking it off the internet. There's no, there's literally I will no destroy <laughs> all the hard work that we did. We will fold this fucking company. I don't care. I do not care. I will turn this bus around. <laughs> That's our episode this week. Shout out to our producer, Caitlin Cleveland, who makes sure that this podcast is in your feed and available for y'all to watch every week on YouTube. Also, a shout out to our audience. Thank you for tuning in every week. Um, and don't forget to pre-order Brave New Meal wherever books are sold and go get your copy of Vice House. You know where to find it. We're not going to talk about it anymore. We're not going to talk about it anymore. Just go get it. <laughs> and again, the day the book is released, Vice Sauce is going to disappear from the internet. So go ahead and hop on it. We have a list of retailers, but any retailer you buy your work from is qualified. And all of our recipes, including our tomato white bean soup with rosemary oil and our Alfredo garlic knots, are available on our website at badmanners.com. So stay hungry, keep cooking, and we'll see y'all next week. I'm ready. Segmented another one. Where's, this, where, where's the segment? What? Yeah. Where is? Where is it? I threw it over there. Oh, okay. Look. All right, I'm, so, I'm doing well, to, Gordon. To, I will that's be the, the good one. part. That's the inside part. Right. Okay, right, okay. Stop yelling. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay, sorry. right. That's great. Right. Now from there, take your bag. All right. Okay, now we'll do one each, okay? Why you would you become a cook? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Norm, keep it together. <laughs> okay. It's not that bad. <laughs>